Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. What would it be like if every prayer you prayed was answered? Do you think your prayer life would be more important than it is now? Uh, do you think you might be praying all the time? Well, my guest says she's learned through God teaching her step by step how to have all your prayers answered, and she'd like to teach you. Is there anyone interested? Yeah. Uh, you know, Jennifer, I, I have a picture inside of me. You're a young child. You're abandoned by your father, mm -hmm. and I can just picture you walking up to strangers, strange men, and saying to them, are you my daddy? That must have been a tough time for you. That was what was repeated to me that I was doing at that time, just as a very young child looking for my dad. And you, uh, your mom remarried. Uh, she married a Mormon, and so you became part of the Mormon church. Uh, you you kind of had your period of rebellion, you drank, you did coke, and that's more than a period, that's a big period of mm -hmm. rebellion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, how in the world did God get a hold of you? It was a miracle because I had no interest in Christianity at all. As a Mormon, naturally they want you to stay in the Mormon church so you're taught who to avoid. So we were taught to avoid Christians. And so uh, becoming desperate, becoming a um, uh, Understanding that the Mormon church was not taking care of my problems, uh, my uncle, he invited us to church and he went to a Pentecostal church. That would be a far cry, a far, the farthest thing that we would ever go to. But when you are, when you're desperate, you try things you would never try. And if so- If you're sinking in the ocean, yeah. you don't care who throws you a rope. Exactly. So my mother and my half-sister and myself, my stepfather didn't come, uh, we went to my uncle's church and it was, it was wild. It was everything you would think about as far as a traditional, old-style, vintage Pentecostal church. You had zero grid. No grid at all. <laughs> uh, you know, they ran around the church in worship. They, um, <laughs> you know, the ladies didn't wear makeup. They believed that was holiness. And uh, just, I sat there not even registering at all what the, what the preacher was saying. And then what happened is he began to play on his guitar. And he sang to the congregation, and I remember exactly what he sang. Are you and, ready? and he sang, Are You Ready? And when he did that, I felt the power and the Are presence of God come upon me. It was like liquid warmth, and it came all over me. Mm. And I Are felt that, and um, I began to cry. And be? I heard a statement uh, in my heart. It was uh, God speaking to me, it was Jesus speaking to me. me. And it was a distinguishable thought and it was, I accept you as you are. And that's something I needed to hear because as a Mormon, I was not feeling accepted as I was. I was failing the standard. But here, Jesus, before I even accepted him, before I knew him uh, the, the correct way, he was saying, I accept you as you are. And so one of the ladies in the church, she sat down next to me because I was obviously being touched by God, crying and everything. And she asked me if I would like to receive Jesus into my heart. And uh, she, I said yes. 
and she prayed me through the, the traditional sinner's prayer, and I meant it with all my heart. And then she said this, she said, would you like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Now, I knew about the term, but I didn't know what it meant. Um, Mormons, we didn't have that in the Mormon church, obviously. And I said, yes, and I began to speak in tongues. <laughs> Did she, t did she tell you to speak in a supernatural? No, she it didn't. It just bubbled out. Yeah, it just came right out. So mm -hmm. you get settled in the faith, mm -hmm. uh, but you must have had a problem with your Mormon stepdad. I did. Um, it, he didn't come to us, excuse me, he didn't come to that church service, obviously. He wasn't going to have anything to do with that. And about a month after, uh, my mother and myself and my half-sister, we, we all gave our life to Jesus. Oh. Um, about a month after, I was studying for my exams in my bedroom. I, of course, lived with my, my family. And the, the power of God came upon me for intercession. Now, I hadn't been taught about intercession. I hadn't been taught about prayer. I didn't know anything about this. All I know is I was on the floor, weeping, wailing, crying out to God for the salvation of my stepfather. And I landed it like this. I landed it on saying to God, I said, save my stepfather, or I, uh, why don't I just die? <laughs> and I mean, the words are really strong. And so, um, you know, I that, felt- That is strong. Yeah, Did it's you strong. Get that? Save my stepfather, or I, I just kill me. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. what affects you yeah. your brain. And so, um, it was not long after that, a local church in town, they offered a seminar on the differences between uh, Christianity and Mormonism. And he actually went on his own. And as a result of that, he gave his life to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> well, you learned from starting with praying for your stepdad and your family um, about prayer that few believers understand. You say, that when you realize the value of prayer, you have tremendous influence with God. I want to find out why you have such influence with God. Any of you interested in that? I am. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! years after this marvelous experience uh, that Jennifer had with God, a couple years later. Uh, by the way, can a Christian, a believer in Jesus, have a demon, not in their spirit, but in their flesh? For instance, have you ever read in the Bible, there's a spirit of infirmity? Can a Christian get sick in the flesh? Not in the spirit, but in the flesh? Of course. Well, two years after Jennifer became a believer, what happened to you? Well, what happened is this. I had a tremendous honeymoon in the Lord. I was learning um, to live for God. I had uh, parted ways with all my old friends. I really was living for Jesus as much as I knew how to do. And so I had peace. There's peace in my home. It was beautiful. And then what happened is it felt like peace left. It left me. It left my household. It felt like darkness was coming in. I hadn't experienced that kind of darkness since before I became a Christian. I remember it from back back in the day, um, but it seemed like everything was coming back again. And so, yeah, you know, it says in the Bible uh, that the devil might leave you for a while. Well, like with Jesus, yeah. he left him for a while, but he would come back. That's what happened. With I you. believe so, and. I was at a prayer, prayer meeting, um, one that I attended for quite a while, and this lady, she looked over at me with concern, and she said this to me. She said, I see a spirit of sorcery standing over you. And when she said that, something picked me up, 
and threw me against the wall, and I went into a demonic manifestation. Could you have stopped that if you really wanted to? No, there was no way. It was everything went out of control the minute she exposed. Did you know in your mind what was happening to you? I didn't. I was not taught these things. This okay. was not in our teaching. I just had to experience it and work okay. it out. And what? Well, um, I was. Uh, these were ladies who were ladies of prayer. Uh, they practiced um, uh, the type of prayer where it, we would call that spiritual warfare. That was how they prayed. And so they were trying to deliver me from this spirit, deliver me from this demon, and they couldn't deliver me. Mm -hmm. And so after about three or four hours of me manifesting demonically, I was taken home because I calmed down enough. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty much left to figure out how to overcome this on my own. All the things you've learned in prayer and deliverance, you learn by the Holy Spirit. I learned by the Holy Spirit. Basically what it boiled down to is I was gonna have to have authority for myself. And so um, it was about three months or so where this spirit was tormenting me. I would hear screaming at night. I would, my bed would shake, my doors would shake. Um, I couldn't sleep. Uh, it would follow me around. Other people would hear the, the knockings on the doors, mm. um, the different manifestations. Other people would experience it too. Now keep in mind, I had been praying. I had been begging God to set me free from this spirit, of set course. me free, praying. And so one day, uh, that spirit actually walked into my bedroom and it, was, it came to torment me. And then something rose up inside of me. It was the Holy Spirit. And I spoke out with authority to that demon. And I said, I will, I not, will not serve, serve you. you. I will only, I will serve, only the serve the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Mm. You, you exercised what you had all along, but did not realize what you had. The Holy Spirit gave you those words. I have to believe it. He sure did. And that was the end of it. And really? I, yeah, I didn't have any problem with that spirit again. Not only that, I wasn't afraid of demons anymore. And also, I've been able to deliver people from the very thing that I was delivered from. Why do we have such tremendous power with God if we pray? I thought it was just intercessors that are supposed to pray. An intercessor, by definition of the word, praying for someone else. These are special people uh, that they love to pray. We love TV, food, you know, but these are special people. Well, everybody is an intercessor who believes in Jesus, and that's because Intercession, by definition, you're just praying for another person. And that's because we have the authority to. We have the authority. Same authority you have yeah, for exactly. yourself, you have for to help others be free. Right. So you can pray for another person to be, let's say, delivered of what I was delivered from. I, I would like to pray for some people right now. Please. In Jesus' name, I break and sever every uh, uh, occultic connection and tie that you still have that is remaining upon your life. I break the torment off your life. I break the, uh, uh, the demonic um, uh, torment and the demonic onslaught off of your life. You are free in the name of Jesus. That spirit of a cult must leave you and never torment you again in Jesus name. That begs the question. It's wonderful to pray for other people, but what if you're loaded with problems? Your family is a mess, your health is a mess, your finances are a mess. Can you use that same power like you did for just yourself, not for someone else and your own family? Yes, we all have the name of Jesus and we all have his written word. That's our toolbox, Those are, that's our weaponry. And so I take a promise from the Bible that I know he has spoken about my situation, and I actually use it like a weapon. In other words, I actually speak to the problem with that scripture, and it's like a weapon against that problem, and it has to change. It has to come to pass because that's the authority we have in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you something. I want you to talk to people watching us right now, and I want you to tell them why it's so important that they understand the supernatural principles of prayer and start operating in them. Uh, and it's not for someone else, it's for them. Right. You were never meant to be defeated. 
Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you can be defeated and live a defeated life. You're a king's kid and you're supposed to look like it and your life is supposed to reflect it. And so now you have to make a decision to choose to walk in your spiritual authority. You have it, but you need to get it on the inside of you that it's yours and start using his word over your life. And everything you begin to speak out it's going to come to pass because you're a king's kid. You have his promises and he spoke the word first. And now you speak in like, in like manner and it'll happen. It will come to pass and you'll see a change. Now, I know you're going to see a change. Now, Jennifer has learned secrets by the Holy Spirit on how to be a winner, how to have your prayers answered. I want to hear a few of these secrets when we come back. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get Jennifer Eva's brand new book, The Intercessor's Handbook, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, Encountering God in Prayer, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9479. In her brand new book, Jennifer Eva's will teach you how to pray with boldness, authority, and supernatural power, not only for your own needs, but for that of others. If you understand what intercessor means, it means that you are praying praying on behalf of another person. Not only are you gonna learn how to pray for other people, but you will definitely learn how to pray for yourself. Through her powerful book, you will understand how to distinguish God's voice and encounter the realm God lives in, the realm of the supernatural. Understand how to shape history itself from your prayers, causing the impossible to become possible. Discover how to tap into the ministry of angels as an invisible army ready to fulfill God's promises and blessings in your life and the lives of people you know. Learn how to minister with prophetic intercession by confessing prophetic words and declarations. The book even includes a practical guide for casting out demons, keys to overcome resistance in the spirit realm, insight into how to operate in your spiritual authority. Through her three-part audio CD teaching, understand how prayer invites the tangible presence of God to come upon you. Learn that prayer is always a dialogue and that God loves to speak to you and He will respond to you. Learn how to better identify God's voice. Find out how to make prayer a supernatural act that will yield supernatural results in your life. Jennifer also releases a powerful prayer of impartation for you to begin experiencing breakthrough prayer. Do you need a breakthrough in unanswered prayers? You will not struggle in your prayer life anymore. Jennifer uses biblical principles and her own life experience of supernatural breakthrough so you'll understand and digest it. Don't miss out on getting Jennifer Eva's brand new book, The Intercessor's Handbook, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, Encountering God in Prayer, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9479. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9479 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, I'm having fun here. I hope you are with Jennifer Evans. And uh, uh, Jennifer, I know you have learned from a lifetime of the supernatural secrets to having all your prayers answered. Tell me a couple. The first is that we actually know who is behind our circumstances, who is behind our negative circumstances. So many times we actually give credit uh, to the wrong source. Things that are happening that are bad to us, we give credit to God for that? Many people do. Well, what would you say to someone that says, okay, I know the devil's doing it, but why is God allowing it? Exactly. And so we don't realize that God has given us authority by his word, uh, uh, by his name, to actually pray and see something change. Tell me a second thing. A second thing would be learning to pray in agreement. This is huge, especially in family matters. We've got one person praying one thing and another person praying another thing. What is God going to do? Sometimes when somebody is, is, it seems like they're terminally ill, it seems like they're dying. Well, are they here supposed to go? Are they supposed to stay? We have people praying all sorts of different so ways. So you don't have the agreement. We don't have the agreement. And God respects unity and agreement. These are simple keys, but they're very supernatural keys 
We miss them all the time. We could see so many prayers answered. We just get those two things. Now, uh, you're talking about authority. Tell me that Christmas story. Well, one of the things that I've learned, and I, I said it previously, is that we have authority in the areas that we've been delivered ourselves. We, we, know, how to pe we know how to get people free. And so one, um, one Christmas, my husband was sharing with the church, and he's a pastor, and he was ministering uh, on the Sunday morning service, and he said to the church, he said, Fathers, I want you to learn to pray for your families. And he gave the whole church a challenge, especially to the dads. Learn to pray for your family. Well, one family in particular took up that challenge. And so the stepfather at the Christmas meal, he decided, I'm going to pray for the Christmas meal. And so he had his wife there, and he had his stepson there, and then the other children. And so as he prayed for the meal, well, guess what happened? His stepson uh, was actually dabbling in the occult, and they didn't know it until the father prayed over the meal. And then he began to levitate. Hmm. And so they didn't know what to do with that. And by the way, so many young people are in it and they don't realize how dangerous it is. It is dangerous. You play with a Ouija board, the spirit that is moving your hand to have it say things will then go right inside of you. Yeah, if I'm putting a little fear of fooling around with uh, the demonic side of the supernatural, good, it's healthy. It's dangerous. So they called the church and they asked for help. And so uh, um, there was three of us and we actually went to their house on Christmas Eve late to help this young boy get free. And so my two other partners, they began to pray, cast the spirit out, but nothing happened. But then when I began to pray, now remember I've been delivered from the occult. And so I, I have a, a, a authority there because of that. And so I grabbed him by the shoulders and I commanded the, the occultic spirit to leave him. And he tensed up, which means that he was manifesting, but it was gonna break. He tensed up. And then within about 30 seconds, it left him. What? I, I can't let you go and let you comment right now on something that is very important to you, prophetic uh, intercession. What does that mean? That is the prayer that prophesies. There's the prayer that's what we call a petition. I'm asking God to do X, Y, Z. Um, and then there is the prayer that prophesies. I know God's will for something, and so I speak it out as if God was speaking it. And it's as if God is actually saying it, but He's saying it through me. And it will come to pass. And it's that strong of a prayer. And prophetic intercession is just as much a part as a prayer as petition is and some of the other aspects of prayer. I want you to pray for people. I know you have special authority over mental illness, uh, yes. um, any mind type disease, yes. Alzheimer's, bones. Pray right now. I just prophesy over your body right now. I prophesy to your mind that you have a sound mind. God has not given you a spirit of fear. He has given you power and love and a sound mind. And so I break mental illness off of you. I command your mind to come together in the name of Jesus. I command your sanity to come back. I command your chemicals uh, to balance out. I command a reversal in Alzheimer's and dementia right here and right now. I even speak to your bones. I command your bones to be healed, your, uh, your broken bones to set themselves right now, for fractures to heal, for knees to be healed, backs to be healed, discs to be healed, your body made whole. I prophesy it in Jesus' name. Well, you know, how much more do you need to see? You have sin. There's none righteous, no, not one. Jesus died in your place. If you will believe that and believe that his blood washed away your sins and just say it with your mouth. I believe that Jesus washed away my sins. I'm sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. Jesus, come and live inside of me and be my Lord. If you will do that right now with your own words, I just prayed a two word prayer and I got set free. I didn't know what I was doing. Here was my prayer. Jesus, help. <laughs> 
Did you know that God has called you, every believer in Jesus, to be an intercessor? Everybody can be an intercessor. If you understand what intercessor means, it means that you are praying on behalf of another person. Once we have breakthrough on our own, then we know how to break through for other people in prayer. So it all works together. Not only are you going to learn how to pray for other people, but you will definitely learn how to pray for yourself. If you are not an intercessor, you're missing the reason God has you on earth. Call now and get Jennifer Eva's brand new book, The Intercessor's Handbook, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, Encountering God in Prayer, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience, yours. For a donation of $35, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9479. In her brand new book, Jennifer Eva's will teach you how to pray with boldness, authority, and supernatural power, not only for your own needs, but for that of others. You can change the world right from your kitchen, right from your car where you're driving, right from the school, right from your office. You literally have the authority and the power and the responsibility to change the world. Through her powerful book, you will understand how to distinguish God's voice and encounter the realm God lives in, the realm of the supernatural. Understand how to shape history itself from your prayers, causing the impossible to become possible. Discover how to tap into the ministry of angels as an invisible army ready to fulfill God's promises and blessings in your life and the lives of people you know. Learn how to minister with prophetic intercession by confessing prophetic words and declarations. The book even includes a practical guide for casting out demons, keys to overcome resistance in the spirit realm, insight into how to operate in your spiritual authority. Prayer is like breathing. It's like, it's like ingesting life straight from heaven because when you pray, it's a supernatural act. You actually go before the throne room of God. You go before the throne of God and you breathe in that atmosphere and life comes into your spirit, your soul, every piece of you, and you are energized when you pray. Through her three-part audio CD teaching, understand how prayer invites the tangible presence of God to come upon you. Learn that prayer is always a dialogue and that God loves to speak to you and He will respond to you. Learn how to better identify God's voice. Find out how to make prayer a supernatural act that will yield supernatural results in your life. Jennifer also releases a powerful prayer of impartation for you to begin experiencing breakthrough prayer. Do you need a breakthrough in unanswered prayers? You will not struggle in your prayer life anymore. Jennifer uses biblical principles and her own life experience of supernatural breakthrough to bring these concepts so you'll understand and digest it. Don't miss out on getting Jennifer Eva's brand new book, The Intercessor's Handbook, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, Encountering God in Prayer, exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9479. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9479 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. People in your neighborhood are crying out, is there a God in heaven who cares? The healing ministry is given to the church in direct answer to that prayer. We must answer that call. Join me, Jack Sheffield, on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth, and I will show you that it's easier than you think.